Ghostface is back in Scream 6 hitting theaters this weekend. Oh, God, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry. 90s ringtones on. Hello? Hello? Well, hello there. What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, man, well, I mean, that is a tough question. I mean, if you're talking about cross-genre stuff, then it, maybe it's Shaun of the Dead because I think it's like the perfect blend of horror and comedy. But if we're going for like the actual definition of like a horror movie, like a slasher movie, like the 70s and 80s and going into the 90s, then it would probably be Halloween. But if we're talking about everything, including like the more elevated horror stuff, then it's probably Hereditary, which, you know, some people say isn't a horror movie. And Hello? He Hello? What a nice man. This review is brought to you by Athletic Greens, the makers of AG1. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Dan for a special offer and stay tuned after this review for more info. Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Merle here with my review of Scream 6, the latest in the Scream saga to hit theaters just one year after the previous film. And I was worried that that short one year gap, basically about 14 months between last year's Scream and this year's Scream 6 would mean that this was a bit of a low effort cash in. And I liked last year's Scream, Scream 5, whatever you want to call it. And I was hoping we wouldn't see a big drop off. And I don't think that we really did with this movie. And it's probably because the same creative team was back for this sequel. Directors Matt Bettinelli, Open, and Tyler Gillette return, as well as writers James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick. And we have left Woodsboro for the even more terrifying climate of New York City. And horror movies in the past have had issues when they take the show to New York, but if you don't think that we see a character watching Jason Takes Manhattan within the first 15 minutes of this movie, well... <laughs> You don't really know what franchise you're watching. Sam, who is played once again by Melissa Barrera, is acting as overprotective guardian to her sister Tara, played by Jenna Ortega, with twins Mindy and Chad, played by Jasmine Savoy Brown, and Mason Gooding, also relocating to the East Coast. And since this is a legacy franchise, we also get the return of Courtney Cox's Gail Weathers and Scream 4's very alive Kirby Reed, played once again by Hayden Pantier. There's also a fresh crop of victims slash potential killers, including new friends Devin Nakoda, Josh Segarra, Jack Champion, and Liana Liberato. We also have Dermot Mulroney as a helpful NYPD detective, and Samara Weaving, Tony Revolori, and Henry Zerny in supporting roles. The cast, though, are the only people who have made the cross-country trip because Ghostface is up to his old mischief once again, hacking and slashing his way across the Big Apple. But this time, as Jaws the Revenge first told us, it appears to be personal. And this Ghostface is indeed much more vicious and bloodthirsty than any previous iteration before, not so much stabbing as brutalizing each victim, and it's a trend that's really carried over from the last movie. Because the self-aware streak runs very long in this franchise, we also get a new set of rules not based on a sequel or a trilogy or a reboot or any of the stuff we've heard in the past, but an acknowledgement that we are now in a full-blown franchise. So it seems like there is no plan for this to be the last film in the Scream series. There's also some clever commentary, I thought, on true crime culture because we see that there is an entire movement that's built up to blame Sam for what happened in the last film because of her rather, let's say, complicated family lineage. And we see the fact that there are Redditors and other people out there that had this whole conspiracy theory that she was really behind everything and that the killers from the last film were taking the fall for her. And I like that we let these kind of modern things bleed into these films. I think that the beginning of the rise of social media kind of went into Scream 4. I think that last year's Scream had some stuff to say about internet culture in general. And then I think here with true crime culture, because how many times have we seen this play out where a crime happens and all of a sudden people are pointing their fingers at others and saying, you did it or this person did it or I figured it out. And of course this would happen with what happened in the last film because that's just how things work now. It's one of the ways that I think this franchise is able to keep things fresh as the years go by. I went back to look at my thoughts on last year's Scream, Scream 5, I guess, uh, in preparation for this review, because I'll often do that when I'm preparing a review for a new film in a franchise, go back and see what I said about the previous film. And one thing that I noted was that this is a franchise that is not just about the fact that there is a killer, like a Michael Myers or a Freddy Krueger, but it's about who the killer is. These are horror movies, these are slasher movies, but they're also all mysteries. And so we have been trained at this point, six movies in, as Scream viewers, to suspect everyone or a group of people in every single movie because we know when we get to the end that there will be a reveal to who the killer or killers are. 
Of course, there's always a motive behind everything that's going on, but I worry that we're getting close to Scooby-Doo territory, where the motives are getting more and more outlandish because at the end of the episode, you have to pull the mask off of, you know, the Frankenstein monster, and it's actually Old Man McGee from the Haunted Amusement Park, which isn't really haunted. I don't think that we're quite there yet, but by definition, we have to get a little bit more complicated and outlandish with each film because there's been an escalation. I mean, when you go back to the original Scream trilogy, just the first three movies, we had a secret killer boyfriend, we had a mom in disguise, we had a psycho killer film student, we had a long lost brother, and then we've only just gone on from there. And actually, for the first time in a Scream movie, on my first watch, I was able to clock who the killer or killers were pretty early in the movie, and pretty much figured out their motivation. I was a little bit off on a couple of aspects of it. It was a little disappointing to me, because I am usually somewhat surprised when we get to one of these movies, and then with this one, I was just kind of going like, yep, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, that's what it is. And I think it's because it's that training. It's that media training. This is a very self-aware franchise, but it's also trained the people who are watching these movies to watch them very carefully and find these clues, and so it has to work even harder to to fool you, the audience member, it's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes type thing in reverse. The more outlandish the motive, the more likely it is to be what's actually going on. A large part of this film takes place in a shrine to the previous entries in the movie surrounded by costumes from previous movies and props from previous movies. And I worry that if we go too much further down the rabbit hole that we are going to get into a self-parody almost that even the worst of the Stab franchise never dared to enter. Now with the passing of time, one thing I think these movies are a testament to are the advances that medical technology have taken over the last almost 30 years or so because it used to be that if you get stabbed in a Scream movie, you probably weren't going to make it. Really, only Dewey had that special ability to take a knife wound or several knife wounds and then just kind of get carted away in an ambulance at the end of the movie, and then he would be back for the next film. Here, it's almost like a Monty Python sketch sometimes. It's almost like, how badly can we stab multiple people in this movie for some of them to survive? Now, they can't all survive because the plot can sometimes be vicious and it requires sacrifices along the way, but I think it is really funny if you go back to where this franchise started and where it is now to see the damage that some characters take. And then, you know, they just walk it off and keep going on down the road uh, as if nothing really happened. The, the human body really has learned to endure so much more pain over the course of these screen movies. And it's one of the real signs of growth that we've seen over the series. These are the things that happen to franchises as they go. They get bigger and not necessarily always better. But luckily, for Scream 6, it is actually a pretty effective thriller for most of the way through. I think it has some of the best sequences in any Scream movie, which is really driven by the brutality of this particular ghost face. I also think that it's pretty cleverly written, and there are definitely parts of the movie that kept me guessing, starting with an unexpected twist on the formula that begins from the very first scene. If it had been able to deliver the freshness from its first two acts, all the way through to its third act, then I think that this really could have been an exceptional and standout entry in this series. But that's another thing about the Scream franchise. This is the sixth movie. I would argue that we've never really had a truly awful entry in this series. And you can't really say that for any horror franchise or almost any franchise that's out there. Six movies in, there's usually at least one total clunker. Yes, there are some parts of the movies that are better, some movies are better than others, and all of them tend to end with some kind of an overly talky, expositional ending. But I also think that you can point to some really effective things in every single Scream movie. I think my least favorite of them, which is Scream 3, still isn't a terrible movie. And even movies that I thought were kind of eh when they came out, like Scream 4, have grown on me over time. And Scream 6 carries this trend on. Is it going to be one of my favorite horror movies or one of my favorite movies of the year? No, but I've certainly seen so much worse in the genre, and I think that it's really commendable that we have talent behind the camera that are actually working to deliver a truly interesting and good movie instead of just another entry in a horror franchise like often happens with so many others.
This is the first in the franchise without Nev Campbell as Sydney Prescott, and I do think the fact that she is not in this movie leaves a hole that some of the other characters struggle to fill, but I do like these new characters, the core four, as they call themselves in the movie. I think that they are very charismatic, and whichever ones make it out of this movie or don't make it out of this movie, I'm not going to spoil any of that. I think that the franchise is in good hands. We also have Courtney Cox returning. She does what she does, and there are some great callbacks to the Gale Weathers that we know all the way back from the original Scream. But I think that you really do have to start looking at some new directions for this franchise. And there is one direction that was sort of hinted at in the last Scream film that they mention again in this film, but don't really explore too much. I think they leave the door open to it. But I think that that would be a very interesting direction for the franchise to go. Now, it's one that other horror franchises in the past have hinted at taking, but have not taken because there is definitely some risk involved in radically changing what your franchise is about and redefining some of the main characters in that franchise. But I think when we also look at the Scream franchise and all of the history that it has, then it may be time to do the riskiest thing, something even riskier than breaking the rules of a sequel or a trilogy or a reboot or a requel or a franchise sequel or a franchise in general, and that's to start making your own rules as a complete reinvention. I doubt that this is going to be the last Scream film, but I am really hoping that the next one keeps the clever roots of this franchise intact, but decides to blaze its own trail and make its own kind of scary movie. Still, though, it is a recommendation for me on Scream 6. It's in theaters this weekend. Are you planning to go see it? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I want to thank the sponsor for this review, Athletic Greens, the makers of AG1. I started taking AG1 because it was hard for me to get into the routine of taking daily supplements. That's something that a lot of people struggle with. But eating breakfast is something I do every day already. So I started including AG1 in my daily breakfast shake, and it makes me feel like I'm covering my nutritional bases right off the bat and starting my day right right. The biggest thing it's helped me with is improved digestion and gut health, but it's also just good to know that I'm giving my body a lot of the things that it really needs. And AG1 was designed to help you live easier and better without having to make huge changes in your daily routine. It's just one scoop of powder mixed with water, or like I said, put into a shake once a day, which makes it easy to live your best life. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, and it's delivered to me every month, which makes it super easy to maintain that daily habit. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com Dan. That's athleticgreens.com D-A-N to check it out. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this review, and thank you for watching. Also, be sure down below you can find the link to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Dan Merle. I'm going to be doing a watch-along for the Academy Awards on Sunday night with everyone over on Patreon. Membership starts at $2. You can just sign up for a month if you want and come watch the Oscars with me. But we had a great time doing it last year. We're going to be doing it again this year. And, of course, I'll have my full recap of the Oscars later on, probably late Sunday night or early Monday morning. And later on right here on the channel, I will have my review of the Adam Driver Dinosaur Action flick. Those are words I never really thought I'd string together. 65. So stay tuned for that very soon. So a busy week and weekend here on the channel. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. I'll be back very soon. Until then, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.